Welcome to the Exponential Growth Podcast, where we demystify what it takes to break into tech. I'm your host, James Hudnell, and my goal is to highlight real-life examples of people with non-traditional backgrounds moving into careers they love, so you can too. Hey everyone, this is a short bonus episode covering the Microsoft Leap Apprenticeship Program. Now I'm recording this on September 29th, 2023. The application for Microsoft Leap's latest cohort just opened this past Monday, the 25th, and it closes next Monday, October 2nd. If you're listening to this after the closing date, my hope is that you might still get some value from the application deep dive. We're going to cover the program at a high level. If you want more context, I also share Microsoft Leap's webinar recording on my own YouTube channel, which I'll link in the show notes or the description, or maybe up here if you're listening on YouTube. Or maybe up here if you're watching on YouTube. All right, so let's dive in. The Microsoft Leap program. So I want to start with how Microsoft actually rolled this out. They teased it a week in advance, which I thought was pretty cool. They built up interest, and I know I was following along and sharing it with all of you on LinkedIn. And the initial day of rollout, again, it wet the appetite, but it was a little bit frustrating because they announced that the applications were open. I know I reposted it on LinkedIn, and yeah, you actually couldn't find it. Shortly after that, they provided an update, said that there was an issue internally, they're working on it, and to please stay tuned to the Microsoft Careers webpage. So we all waited with bated breath, and then they basically gave a different version of that message a few hours later. The rollout left a lot to be desired in my mind, but Microsoft was pretty good at communicating throughout, and the application itself did become available later that evening. So all in all, Kind of a spotty rollout, but again, I like the communication on Microsoft's part. That was nice, keeping us in the loop throughout. All right. Now, again, I'm going to summarize the main webinar that Microsoft held. And again, if you want that deep dive, you can check out the recording that I provided either in the show notes or the description below. But Microsoft, during that presentation, they really talked about three pillars of the program. The first being professional skills, the second transformative experience, and the third community and network. So for professional skills, my takeaway was basically the biggest sell is that you're going to learn from real Microsoft engineers through project-based learning. So you are going to develop those professional skills and transformative experience. You're going to have one-on-one coaching and mentorship. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. And the community and network aspect. So it is cohort-based, which I'm probably going to do this more than once, guys. I'm going to compare this to LinkedIn's Reach Apprenticeship Program just because that's what I'm familiar with. We are also cohort based and I can't speak highly enough about that approach to onboarding, not only to a company, but to tech in general. So the Microsoft Leap program is cohort based and there's also Leap alumni that you will more than likely be able to tap into after the program. So what's a profile of a common candidate? One, you might be a career relauncher. Microsoft defines this as someone who's returning to tech after taking at least two years off. It was really interesting to note on their slides, they specifically highlighted two plus years off. I'm not sure if you're ineligible, if you have a gap that's less than that. My assumption is maybe, but still I would encourage you to apply, even if that applies to you. So if you're not a career relauncher, maybe you're a career transformer. Maybe you're self-taught, you attended a boot camp, maybe you completed an associate's degree at a community college. And they say they look for one year of business or technology training education. They are not looking for people that just all of a sudden decided that they want to delve into the world of programming. This is not for you, if that's the case. They encourage you to attend college, attend a boot camp, self-teach, go down that rabbit hole. And then once you have that baseline understanding, that's the point at which this program becomes an option for you. So community college graduate, I think I had mentioned that as well. They highlighted that as a a target audience for them and who this isn't for. Again, someone who is brand new to software development, not for you. And you can also be overqualified. If you have a bachelor's or a master's in CS, Microsoft encourages you to apply for an internship as opposed to the LEAP apprenticeship program. So what's the program timeline? The application window, September 25th through October 2nd. So depending on when you're listening to this, maybe it's still open, maybe it's not. It is a 16-week paid program, and the first four weeks, it's going to basically be paid classroom training. The next 12 weeks, it's going to be the paid program. That's where you are placed on a team with other Microsoft engineers, and you will be contributing to a real-world project and problem. 
and it wasn't explicitly stated on the slides, but I listened to one of the Leap testimonials where they mentioned it's basically five days a week, eight hours a day. I know someone asked in the question if they could work another job alongside this, and the presenter didn't say no, but at the same time, if the expectation is to put in eight hours a day, five days a week, that's the expectation. So if you are going to do two jobs, make sure that you are not sacrificing your physical or mental well-being in so doing. They mentioned that the interviews will be held about one month after the application closes and that the cohort itself starts in January. Now, how much are you going to get paid for this? I did a little bit of research online and seem to point to around $96,000, $97,000 a year, which that also seems in line with the LinkedIn Reach apprenticeship salary threshold. I think I also read that it depends on your location as well. If you're watching this, you can see in the bottom right, this is a snippet from the actual application itself where they say the base pay range for this apprenticeship is $5,090 to $10,120 per month. It's a pretty big range. There's a different range applicable to specific work locations within San Francisco Bay Area and the New York City metropolitan area, and the base pay range for this role in those locations is $6,690 to $11,030 per month. So again, this is a four-month program, so even the $96,000 or thereabout figure, I assume that will be prorated accordingly. And yeah, I guess we'll move on now to the other details of the program. The apprenticeship is fully remote, which that's different from the LinkedIn Reach apprenticeship, at least the latest cohort. The expectations for that program, if you were unfamiliar, is that you would be hybrid. But Microsoft is saying you can be fully remote in this Microsoft Leap apprenticeship. They also went on to state that remaining remote would be a conversation to be had with your manager at the conclusion of your program if Microsoft opts to convert you to a full-time employee. Microsoft boasted a 98% employability rate. 70% actually convert to a full-time Microsoft employee. So that's, a, that's impressive. 98% of the people that take part in this program are employed. I assume it's in a software-related role. They didn't specify on that, but either way you slice it, those are positive stats. Proof of ability. They are looking to make sure that you know how to code. You shouldn't be brand new. They're also not looking for experts. They recognize this is an apprenticeship program for early career developers. And again, we're coming back to the community college associate's degree in computer science or similar. And they say in lieu of that, you can also have less than two years of equivalent work experience. So they were explicit in their mentioning of less than two years. Again, I'm not sure what would happen if you have more than that. Again, I wouldn't personally let that rule me out. I would still proceed and apply if that was the only thing holding me back. They also mentioned they're looking for completed certifications. They highlighted this point several times, and I found this interesting. If you attended a boot camp, they are looking that you actually graduated from that boot camp, which anyone that knows my story, I joined Springboard and got about 80% of the way through before I joined LinkedIn as an apprentice developer. So... According to that, I would not have made the cut in this regard. So keep that in mind. Again, if you got 90% of the way through a boot camp, and if that's the only thing holding you back, I would still encourage you to apply, but still keep this in mind. The coding language doesn't matter. This is a common question that came up during the webinar. People were asking which languages Microsoft preferred, and the presenter made a great point where, depending on the team that you join, the language and the frameworks can vary greatly. So don't focus or concern yourself with the actual language you need to learn. Basically, use the language that you are the strongest in for the interview when you go through the coding problems, which we will talk about more a little bit later. Things that they will look at. They're going to look at your GitHub profile. So hopefully you have one. They made it a point to mention adding links on your resume. They're going to look at your resume as well, and they encourage to link your GitHub projects and or work that you'd like to highlight. Add those links to your resume. Make sure that those links work. Make it easy for them. They also mentioned they are going to look at your LinkedIn profile, so make sure that is in tip-top shape. I know we talk about that on some of the other episodes if you need a refresher there. 
They also mentioned they look at every application, which I found refreshing. If you are authorized to work in the U.S., you are eligible. There was a question about that. And long story short, if you are authorized to work in the U.S., you are eligible for this program. So hopefully that applies to you. If not, I know they also have other cohorts throughout the year that sometimes apply to different regions. Application and interview prep. The presenter recommended a few different resources for getting ready for the interview. Before we go there, I want to highlight that there is a window between the time that applications are due and when they are planning to start the interview process. So if you are not confident in any of the above, you do have time to brush up on these skills. The first resource they shared is YouTube, basically how to interview at Microsoft videos. I did that for you, and I'm pretty sure I found the one that they are referring to. I will add a link in the show notes, and I will also add it above if you happen to be watching on YouTube right now. They mentioned Pramp.com. I'd never heard of that before. It seems to be a mock interview site, so that's kind of interesting. They mentioned Cracking the Coding Interview book. I know I bought that book in preparation for my job hunt. I actually never cracked the book open, but they do highlight this as a resource that could help you. I will also mention that this is a very big book, so there may be better options or better ways for you to spend your time in between submitting your application and hopefully preparing for the interview itself, but still keep this in mind. They recommend that book as a good resource. They mentioned there will be whiteboarding, or I assume the digital equivalent because the, this is a remote position. So I would assume that you're going to have a leet code style whiteboarding problem, or maybe I'm not sure if that will be in a Google Doc or something like that. I would encourage you to brush up on maybe some of the most common questions or patterns on leet code or your favorite preparation tool. And again, I wanted to highlight, you know, you've got a month from the time you submit these applications to when these interviews start happening. So you do have time to prepare, even if you're not prepared right now. And final note on the application, essays have been removed from the application. I think they mentioned this is the first year that there are no essays. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but regardless, they are not a part of it. They say they want to see what you can do and maybe not necessarily what you say you can do. All right, final thoughts. The LEAP program is almost 10 years old. They mentioned that in the presentation, and I just thought that was pretty fascinating. This seems to be one of the oldest apprenticeship programs that I'm aware of anyway, and I think it's really cool that Microsoft has a program that they have supported for almost a decade, so I really like that. One of the former LEAP apprentices mentioned to get your applications in a little bit early because she mentioned... In her cohort, I think there was an issue where the application window closed in a different time zone, a UTC time zone, as opposed to Pacific Standard Time. So long story short there, don't wait until the last minute to submit your application. This is also the first year that Microsoft is allowing Microsoft employees to refer you. Basically, if you know anyone at Microsoft, you can ask for them to refer you. I'm not sure how I feel about that, but that doesn't matter. It's a thing. And the way that that workflow works is if you know someone that works at Microsoft, you basically point them to the job application. They will go to the application. There is a referral link that only they can see. They submit some information. I'm not sure what that is. And then ultimately you will receive an email link to the application itself. And before you ask me, even though I am a LinkedIn employee, I do not have access to the referral link that they mentioned. That is for Microsoft employees only. They mentioned that they really look at projects. They don't just look that you graduated a boot camp. They want to see what you built and what you did with your time after that boot camp. So maybe you have a project that's half done or half baked. Maybe it's a good use of your time to use this month to go back and look at it from a fresh set of eyes. Pretend that you're a Microsoft recruiter reviewing an application. Do the best you can to make it even better and to blow them away. I know I mentioned they weren't looking for any particular languages, but they did mention that if you have experience in cloud, specifically Azure Web Services, that was not a bad thing. That probably speaks to the fact that Microsoft Azure is their cloud product. So if you have experience in that, that might separate you from someone that doesn't. And they mentioned the same thing with AI and prompt engineering. Again, it's not a requirement, but it can help you stand out. All right, so now we're actually going to walk through the actual application process itself. So if you're following along on video, you can watch now and we'll go through the process together. If not, I will do what I can to 
talk through what I am doing and maybe you can follow along later on. So I am on the Microsoft careers page. I will link the actual job posting in either the show notes or the description. So from this, there is an apply button. I'm going to click on that apply. And now they ask you to sign in. So I am going to sign in with a Microsoft account. You can also use LinkedIn, Google, or Facebook, or if you are a Microsoft employee, which I assume you will not be, if you're applying to this, you can also authenticate that way. So I'm clicking on the Microsoft option. I am logging into the Microsoft account that I made specifically for this demo, logging in, stay signed in. No, thank you. And now we're being taken to the application itself. I pre-filled some of this information just to save us some time, but I will still walk through the basics. It looks like it reverted back to the previous state. So let me click on complete application, see where it takes us. All right, so we have our profile here where we basically have added our name, our address. They want your address. The phone number is optional. Your resume. I didn't upload a resume just because I'm not actually trying to get this job, but here they have a section where you would upload yours and they asked for your education. So I put mine here just for fun. The dates are not accurate, but this is where you would add any education you have. I assume you could find a spot for a boot camp or whatnot, but you would basically put that here. Attachments, I'm not sure what they're looking for there. And then there are two disclaimers as part of the online application process, you'll be asked whether you possess certain minimum required qualifications for the role. By checking this box, you agree that you will answer these accurately, right? And then by checking this, you agree to the Microsoft privacy notice. So make sure you check that out if you would like to before saving and continuing. Moving on to the next step in the process. Work authorization. Are you legally authorized to work in the United States? I think we mentioned that earlier. I, I put yes. And the second question, in order to obtain or maintain employment eligibility, will you now or in the future require the company's sponsorship for an immigration-related employment benefit, i.e. work visa, work permit? No. Save and continue. You can't go back and edit it. Okay, we're going to save and continue. Now this should take us to the questions, I believe. Let's see. Yes, so here now we are on the candidate questions. So please answer the following questions. Are you currently employed by government or government agency in any capacity? I am not. Have you signed a non-compete or non-disclosure agreement, which may become an obstacle in your acceptance of employment at Microsoft? Answer that. Have you ever worked with Microsoft as a full-time, part-time employee, intern, vendor, agency, temporary, or business guest? If yes, please provide as much information about your former employment as you can. I have not. Uh, if yes, if yes, if yes, if yes. All right. Are you now or have you ever been employed by a Microsoft subsidiary, i.e. LinkedIn? So here, I guess I would actually say yes. If yes, please indicate what subsidiary, LinkedIn, just putting this for fun, I guess. And I'm not going to hit the submit button, guys, just because I don't want to take away a chance for one of you to have your application viewed, even though I know they mentioned that they would view all of them. But my assumption is you would submit right here. And then beyond that, I assume you'll get some kind of a confirmation. And yeah, that is the Microsoft Leap Apprenticeship. Again, the window closes this Monday at I'm actually not sure what time it is, but based on what we talked about earlier, you probably want to get yours in. I would shoot for the first instead of waiting for the second. So I would highly encourage anybody listening to this that wants to apply to this cohort to get those applications in by October 1st, just to be safe. All right. So that was a summary of the apprenticeship program. I wanted to briefly touch on LinkedIn's Reach Apprenticeship Program update. I know many of you applied to that and you are anxiously awaiting. Uh, I've gotten lots of messages from many of you asking about next steps, what you can do, how long it takes. And I did want to share a approximate timeline that we were told the process has started. Some of the initial applications are being pre-filtered. And so in terms of timelines, the on-site interview, according to what I've been told, will start sometime in October to mid-November. So all of that to say, don't freak out if you haven't heard anything yet. You know, I would imagine 
if it's mid-November, maybe the end of November, early December, that might be the point at which you were not selected. And they told us they make every effort to reach out and let everyone know about their application status regardless. So hopefully you're going to hear something either way, but don't freak out if you haven't heard anything yet, because again, mid-October to mid-November, that's the approximate timeline for coordinating these on-site, they call them on-site interviews, but my assumption, if it's like the past, that'll be a remote interview. So yeah, we have a separate, I think we have a few different episodes on the LinkedIn Reach Apprenticeship Program. I'm also happy to dedicate a future episodes to that. If that's something you guys would like, let me know in the comments and I'd be happy to do that. Now, before we close, I noticed a tweet recently where there were several software engineering internships that were open or recently closing. And even if when you are either listening or viewing this, if they've expired, I still want you to know that these exist because these are programs that you can put on your radar for future cohorts. So I'm just going to run through these very quickly. If you are watching on video, you can follow along with me. And again, this tweet was from Tanika Askew. Hopefully I'm pronouncing your name right, Tanika. And I will also share a link to the tweet in the show notes or the description below. So HubSpot has a product and software engineering internship and co-ops for 2024 in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Now they do say apply before September 27th. That was two days ago. So I assume this is closed, but again, it's good to know that HubSpot has internships and co-ops and they're mentioning that it's $50 an hour. So good to know as well. Next program. United Airlines has opened their early career programs for students looking for summer internships or full-time opportunities in tech, data, product, operations, and more. There are travel perks, apparently, and you can apply here, right? The next one, Asana has software engineering internships for summer 2024. It looks like those are 12 weeks long. They are held in San Francisco and New York. They pay $64.75 an hour. I guess they have to do that in those very high cost of living areas. And you can apply here on this link. Again, I will link to the tweet and to each of these programs in the show notes or description. Next company, Nordstrom has fashion design, AI, industrial data and software engineering internships. This is a 10 week program held in Seattle, Washington. Looks like the pay range is somewhere between 25 and $44 per hour. Next one, SpaceX. This one looks pretty cool. They have a 12 week summer 2024 internship across various teams in multiple on site locations. The pay is $30 to $40 an hour based on the academic year. The internships are a minimum of 12 consecutive weeks full time. So you can apply to SpaceX there. Intel has 58 internship positions in the US and 169 globally for 2024. So that's a lot of spots. These programs are four to six months long across four locations, Hillsboro, Phoenix, Folsom, and Santa Clara. I assume that's the US locations, not sure about the international. Pay ranges all the way from 19 to $86.50 with tech positions on the higher end. So that's quite a range. And I think, looks like Google has a few here as well. Yeah, so yeah. Looks like there are a lot of internship programs available and yeah, we're going to wrap it there. Again, this was a short episode primarily meant to let you know about the Microsoft leap apprenticeship cohort that is open right now. And again, if you're listening to this later, hopefully you can glean some application advice that might help you in the future. And I'll mention it one more time. If you want a more of a deep dive on the Microsoft Leap program, I shared Microsoft's informational webinar that they held this past Monday. I found that extremely informative and it also included testimonials from Leap candidates. Thanks for listening. If you got value from today's show, please consider leaving a five-star rating and a review on Apple or Spotify. It's a free way you can support the show and help other people just like you find the story and others like it. If you enjoyed this conversation, be sure to follow the show on whatever podcast application you use. And most importantly, if you know someone that might be interested in breaking into tech, tell them about the show. 